So doing something a little bit different today. Usually I take stuff apart, but I wanted to make something. I needed to make something kind of specific. I have a spectrum analyzer, but uh, it's been busted for a while. I haven't had time to fix it, and it's getting more and more and more stuff piled on top of it by the day. So it's out of the question. Um, going through some app notes as I do um, I found something by Jim Williams the God app note 262 from the National Semiconductor Applications Handbook it is fairly straightforward as you can see um, the only thing of moderate difficulty to get is the LM394 which even then uh, like the MMBT, whatever, the 3904s that are duals uh, that you can get from DigiKey nowadays, probably just the same, or just as good. Anyways, um, he used, well, let me start from the beginning. So, what I wanted to do was make a simple sweep oscillator. So, I could characterize filters with uh, just my oscilloscope. So I tried making this, which was in an old Maplin magazine, and it, I, I didn't like it. I don't know what about it I didn't really like. I think the 13700s, not a fan of them, or the 3080s, just because you gotta take the signals so goddamn low. It's ridiculous. Um, so I got rid of that. Saw this, figured it would work, so I could use this to sweep the filters with. Yes, I would need something to drive this in an exponential manner. I would get to that later. Um, so I started building this up. Ran into a few problems, uh, one of which is inherently wrong with the schematic itself, and that is I'll find a pin. that right there it's not gonna work with that it needs positive feedback as he mentioned somewhere in the text here or maybe it was in this text where it talks about the positive feedback oh not even in frame what a dumbass there's some of the waveforms Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, made it up. So, stick around with it on the uh, scope for a minute. Ooh, okay. Let me see here if I can get everything in the show without shorting something out. Okay. So for my control voltage, just used a little 10K pot. Um, it's supposed to be linear from, what is it? Uh, zero to 20 kilohertz from zero to 10 volts. Obviously you can take it a little bit above 10 volts. You can take above 20 kilohertz. It just depends on how you have it set up. I went with it as bog standard just because I uh, want to test audio filters with it, so I kept it how it is. Um, I originally kept to the schematic and used a potentiometer for the full scale trim. I used that and that, and there was one more I thought. Oh, the amplitude trim. I got rid of that eventually, but I started with it. Um, I had to get rid of it all and go with more discreet stuff. Well, not really. Uh, I went with trim pots instead of potentiometers. I'll get to that in a minute. So, after going through the hardest part of getting this to work, I would say is... I don't know this part in here 
because whenever it's switching it's doing so at an incredible rate so it's superimposing some harsh spikes on the sine wave Let's see if I can find that here uh, yeah so just on the 5 volt peak to peak sine wave there the spike itself is massive and it gets worse as you take the frequency up so that's yeah that was all the way at 20 and it sticks with it until it pretty much falls off flat I have to keep it at 20 milliseconds or it'll free run and that's annoying So yeah, even at no voltage whatsoever, it's still popping through every now and then. Spike, 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 blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I'm going to go through how I kind of tweaked this up. Because as you can see, the, it's off. I don't know how it got off because I had perfected it. But obviously not. So what I did was I... I'm running my probe to the collector of the LM394. That is the one getting driven from amplifier 2. Uh, I have my amplifiers amplifier 1, amplifier 2, amplifier 3, amplifier 4. And I pretty much don't even use amplifier 4. Get to that later too. So, these pots right here, they are essentially just offsets. They make it so you're going to be slanting this way or slanting this way. So, with the top one, the peak tends to move. With the bottom one, the trough tends to wonky around. It's one of those things where you got to adjust a little, go back, adjust a little more, go back, adjust more, blah, 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 blah. I, I finally, I just fucking gave up. I was tired of dicking with it, so I just quit. Um, after I got that, I adjusted these. He actually gives the proper way to adjust it, and I can go over that, and I pretty well kept to it. Um... I really didn't change too terribly much from this. To calibrate the circuit, apply 10 volts to the input and adjust the wave shape trim and symmetry trim, which would be uh, wave shape trim, symmetry trim. Then uh, trim for minimum distortion, uh, distortion analyzer. I didn't use that. I just went with whatever looked good on a scope. And to do that, I, I don't know. I went back to geometry, I guess. So I just wanted something that looked decent on the scope. And I used both channels. So I had like the triangle wave on channel two, the sine wave on channel one. I inverted channel two and I would just m move it up and down so it would cross and I would try to even up all the angles anyways <clears throat> so one thing that I really well I didn't use any of the amplifiers I wanted to know if I could do it without using the LF356's I tried regular JFETs, DIFETs, BIFETs, um, I tried a couple CMOS amplifiers, BJTs, and they all seem to work fine. Uh, the values that needed to be changed a lot to, I don't know, uh, allow those changes to be made. I had to change the values of the capacitors for 
A3 and the feed forward to A3. So, and when I was using the BJTs, I had to lower that and raise that. So I pretty much had them the same, but when I was looking at the timing of all of them, it, I don't know. This isn't as vital as the one megahertz VCO that he makes in the uh, oh shit, Lunar Technology App Notes book. So, since it really didn't matter, I don't care too much about the distortion that's being thrown out. I just went with it. Anyways, uh, so I got rid of the big potentiometers and their flying leads because of the spikes that get superimposed during the switch of the triangle. And I went to little tiny pots. Instead of having the switching circuitry over here, I moved it up to the second row of the breadboard. Didn't help. So trying something else I was just poking around to try to find signals and I ended up finding a bigger and better sine wave from the opposite collector why he doesn't use that collector of the 394 I don't know it's got a signal that's uh, 7, 8 volts compared to the one over here that's 500 millivolts. And over here, I, I don't know why it's picking up the swishing noise still. I try to find that peaking and get rid of it for like three days, sadly. And couldn't do it. So finally I just said to hell with it. I took a lead from this one, put an amplifier up here, and used this to drive a filter whenever I got the exponential ramp finished. But anyways, up here it still manages to find a spike. So I'm thinking that it's a difference in impedance between the grounds of the different breadboards. I tried alleviating that though by using direct ground leads, like basically making a star pattern, I guess, and taking it right back to the main power supply ground didn't work tried decoupling capacitors all over this this that, that, that blah 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 didn't work what managed to work just a wee bit let me see if i can ram that in there get the spike going on here there we go. So that's terrible. I, absolutely terrible. So you can tell where it's coming from a little bit by pinching the transistor, putting your finger on the triangle wave generator, which coming from over here. Coincidentally, well, let me just bring it on up. So yeah, it, no surprise where it's coming from. It lines up right then. So just that quick switch that the JFET does, it just kills it. And I think that's why he ended up switching to a different means of uh, what am I trying to say here uh, getting the downslope of the triangle because of that and in other ways that it's done hold on a second got papers out the ass all right here's another way that he does it by just using two J fets and actually an actual comparator instead of just using a fourth op amp. The fourth op amp is one because that's all this is doing right here. It's comparing as soon as the voltage gets to the threshold, which is set by this here. I didn't use an LM329. I just used a, I don't know, five volt, maybe six volt Zener. And yeah, works, works a treat. 
I had to change the value of this. I changed the value of that resistor there. I had to wait to get the 4393 and the 2369 uh, transistors, the JFET and BJT, respectively. And while I was waiting, I just tried the JFETs that I had on hand, like the J102, three, the J310, uh, what was it, 5457 or 5458 maybe, 3819, all of them worked. They all worked to treat. And I know a couple of them aren't radio frequency ones. So, anyways, uh, quadruple two, two and two, 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 two. Worked fine for there. Um, let's see, where did I dick up the most at? Um, I was a real bonehead and took that to ground instead of 15 volts. I was even bigger dumbass and took that to negative 15 volts instead of ground at one time fried the transistor that's uh, switching it on and off and yeah the value here the 75k I had to mess around with it a little bit and the value of uh, resistance there I went back and forth with a couple different values there until I found the right ones that allowed me to trim the triangle wave just right to be shaped by the logarithmic uh, sine wave converter I guess uh, not a lot of research I guess can be found out about that I've really only found a few circuits that deal with it and it seems to be mostly Jim Williams who like to use it one old transistor book that I have um, they mention it very very shortly but let me see as I do 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 okay, okay. so yeah more little notes I guess you can pause and see what all stupid shit that I scribbled um, I thought maybe a uh, potentiometer would be best here so you could level out the, I guess, differential amplifier and didn't need to do that. Um, yeah, the main thing we had to do was switch that around to positive feedback and take the negative to ground. This amplifier and this one, two and four, I ended up putting a resistance in the pause the non-inverting and put to ground just so uh, the offset wouldn't get too terrible but really that was only necessary when I was using BJT component um, let's see. so I thought about after the second day I thought about trying this methodology of the triangle wave instead because and he directly mentions that the 8 puff going from here to ground would help control some of those uh, peak spikes from when it switches to the negative slope or to the positive slope, whatever it's not on. And these two are just biased, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, didn't have to do that. Didn't care to. Um, because I found out that if I would just take the A4 which is I guess just the buffer amplifier instead of using the one from uh, A3 how do I want to word that the second amplifier from this one I found if I took it off the board this way there was no switching noise whatsoever if I took it up to this one it was just a little bit and I can live with a little bit so just want that anyways so after I got it all set up and done I thought, wow I'm ready no I'm not anyways to characterize a filter you kind of need to have uh, I don't know um, a ramp but not just a ramp because most filters are 
in exponential nature, then you need um, an exponential ramp. So I guess I'll move on to that one. Let me see where I have this printed off too, but I can't find it. Probably I'd use this toilet paper. Um, eventually it will surface. Okay, here we go. This is it. It came from the, cir the Circuit Design Idea Handbook, page 128 by Hank Olson. Good on you, Hank. Um, in that, he basically states you can make it a convex or a concave, no matter what you want. In this, we just wanted a concave, so I did away with the switch, just had those permanently connected, so three is going from the voltage divider of the first amplifier, and which LM310, don't need to look it up, it's just a bump, buffer amp. So, um, at the 15K, going straight to ground from the negative input of a three slash four, and the SCR is with switching. So I have a pulse driving the SCR, that's coming from just a regular oh Jesus uh, coming from 555 let me urge. so 555 five, five, five. 7 five, 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 if you must know and a uh, couple dual amplifiers that's a lot one of those is single um, so I just have this getting buffered nothing there because that's on the convex side don't care about that concave there pulling out but from there this is just all on the feedback loop I guess so you can adjust the curvature how much you want it to go and then you can adjust um, yeah how much start current you get so whatever didn't really have to dick around too much with that one. Let me go back to that, sorry. I just made it straight up. I had some funky ass little logic level SCR. It worked fine. Um, just used the 2907 there. I think I used a couple LM4562s or OPA2120 or 2132s or 21. 34s or 2107s or something I don't know don't care it doesn't matter I try to shit ton of different ones and what do you know they all work so what did I do um I did away with the 10k just used a 2k2 resistor because that's just uh, a stop resistor so you don't burn out your wiper on your pot there if you go all the way to the rail um, that one, I think I did what they told me to and just used a 1K set pot and used 10K resistors all the way around. It took me maybe 20 minutes to make this. It was super simple to set up. I actually think it worked on the first try, so I was pretty stoked about that. Now, let me see here. I can remember how the, oh, oh, shorted something out. Hmm, 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 hmm. Now where did I put my tweezers? No, these are not tweezers. Okay, terrific. So, channel two. Uh oh. What did I do now? Oh, that's the wrong hole. Sorry, let me get my big fat head out of the way. Let's 
see. Hopefully, uh, my daughter didn't get a hold of anything in here because Mama wasn't paying attention. Let her run around. So who fucking knows? Touching, it shouldn't be touching. I can tell, anyways. Hmm. I wonder if I put one of those bad op amps back in there. Because I stole the op amps from uh, this circuit to fix a couple that I blew there. I wouldn't. Surprise me if I did something stupid like that. Uh, 49720. Hold that thought. Let's see here. What you all that might be. 1612. Alright, yeah, try this. We shall see. I think this one might be fucked up too. Turn that off. there but it did not short out the supply so that's a plus I guess So that's getting juice. On his ground, check. Pink three. Getting pulses. What about you? Hmm. Are you the dead one? I think so. Oh. I want something. Let's try that again. Oh. Well, fixed. Now let's try putting them back one at a time. See which one. Exit shit to bed. Mm -hmm. Should we put these on the fucking same thing? Dumbass. No. 
if that's the right one. God help me. Oh, my big foot bent the goddamn pins when I stepped on it. You fucking dipshit. Alright. That looks like pin four to me. Alright. Didn't blow up. Cool. Let's try our look at this one. Uh, didn't blow up. Okay, so I just had to have something a little too close. Pin one, permalo. Hmm. <laughs> Still getting pulses. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. It's not even in all the way. Hey, oh, there we go. You son of a bitch, stop it. What the fuck is making it short out over there? Try again, shall we? God, if I could hit the fucking hole. Ew. All right, positive, negative, ground, flying lead. Perfect. That can't be the problem at all. Let's fix this thing. It's half-assed in there. Good enough. Son of a bitch. There we go. All right. I don't know what I did there. Something. Fucked something up. And I fixed it, I guess. Alright. Don't want that. I want something perma. Uh, menu trigger, channel 2, level. And this. I guess I really don't need it anywhere. I can just look at. Pretty waveform over there. Maybe. I'll get there eventually. Bear with me. Okay. So. I I just remembered I lied to you. Totally lied to you. I did have to add something to this. I did not like the way that this was coming out offset. Because if it didn't go all the way down to zero, the oscillator wouldn't go back to zero, right? See, that's not really looking that great. But it's all the way to zero and we can look that probably goes down to 10 hertz which good enough for me so to get that offset I just put up put the k-pop between positive and negative 15 had the wiper going to the negative input of this one right here so I guess there perfect see like I never fucked up 
beautiful. So that ends up giving me what I want. Now, uh, and uh, Robert A. Penfold's article, he was doing this with a catheter oscilloscope, and I'm not obviously I have one but why I mean I have that I have a rival so when I wanted to check out four traces I could because this thing I only have the sorry ass two channel one wah, wah, wah. Yeah. characterizing filters beautiful thank you for the idea Robert Pinfold but I want my own route so yeah, I guess I could show you what the actual pots do to this. Maybe, I don't know. I can find my little pokey bit that's got a flat end on it. If I can't, then I'm just going to have to bleed me. Um... What's that? Now it's flat. That's not going to do it. Oh, here we go. So yeah, I probably should have changed this a little bit because like the value of the pot because all it takes is one teeny tiny little bump in it goes a little crazy with it and it flattens out and comes to stop at let's see 14.2 volts let me get channel one off there now so we can see it so it'll flatten out and you can go all the way with it if you really wanted to but I don't know and you can adjust how exponent exponential the curve is or the rate of change so I, I don't know I just eyeballed it, guessed, I guess. Had mine set to, I think, I don't know, 12 volts peak. 13, 14, no. That's, see, I shouldn't addict with it. Now it's going to be broken forever. Really, there's no set law saying you have to have 10k pots on these. You can very easily just measure it, see what's ballpark close, and then put a little 50 ohm pot in there. Whatever. Whatever makes you happy. You know? I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. You're right. I'm rarely right. I wouldn't want to be told I'm wrong all the goddamn time. That's what my wife's for. You son of a bitch. That's good enough. 11.8 volts. Right on. So here's. Just, I don't know. Probably can't even remember where. Where the signal going. All right, that looks like a signal wire. It's positive, negative, or positive, ground, negative. All right, let me just hash this up real quick. Should I turn that off? Probably. We got a little negative here. I try to keep all my wires color coded, but once I run out, you know, kind of get to the point where I say, "Fuck it," and don't make all the signal wires the same color. Don't make all the power wires the same color. Just go for length. It's not just a matter of length. It's a matter of girth. I don't know what that's from. Probably not near as funny as in its context. Anyways. Come on, you son of a bitch. Usually I have some delicate tweezers that I do this with. So I'm not mashing them all up. We're just going to take signal from right here, which is this op amp. 
So. Let's see if my half ass attempt at it. Hooking something up. Alright, I don't know why I'm so fucking gung ho and trying to do stuff fast. If you're still watching this video, obviously you don't give a fuck how fast I'm making it. I don't even know why you're still watching. Why, why are you here? What are you getting out of this? Anyways, uh, let's see. Power, signal. Eh, I guess we want to measure it somehow. That looks like an output to me. Really should have marked these. Anyway, there we go. Well, what does that show us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But. Hold on a second. It would probably be better if I keep the probes that I've set on the things that I have them set for. See, you know what the hell? I don't know what the fuck I did there. It just came good. Whatever. Probably spent 10 minutes of dicking around with op amps on that board for no reason. And I asked myself, why didn't I just remake this? Paying careful, careful attention to location of switchers. But I don't. Nope, oh, sorry. God damn it, is this thing seriously not working again? Oh my god, how annoying are you? Something's gonna blow up. There we go. Wait, no, that's not it. Well, it's back. <laughs> Using 20 more milliamps than it was before, but that's fine. It's working. It's not fine. All right. That down and over channel one, you're back. Okay, so obviously that's not the input. You goddamn dumbass. See, that's why you don't have signal wires and power wires. The same goddamn color. What a fucking idiot. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I think I blew something up now. Don't. Must have. Won't, 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 won't. Oh, no. I must have lost a probe. There, see, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's much better. See how good things work when you put wires where they're supposed to be put? God damn it. Feels good. Alright. Anyways, that right there, those little squiggles, is the purpose of this whole fucking shebang. Was it worth it? I don't know, person. Was it? Was it worth it? Is it worth it? I don't know. Anyways, we'll probably get back to tearing shit down. Or maybe not. No, I, mean, I have a couple more things that I'm going to make. I just figured 
if somebody wanted to know why their AN 262 wasn't working, hey, maybe you need to switch around the positive and negative inputs of your op amp number three. Okay? Okay then. 